This election year, we are looking back at 100 years of women's suffrage. In 1920, the 19th Amendment guaranteed women the right to vote. And there are still many themes from the suffrage movement that resonate today. So I'm here with Kate Roberts from the Minnesota History Center. The 100 years that we've experienced of women's suffrage is great, but there were also years and years of work that went into even getting the right to vote. I think a lot of people would be surprised to know that we had the first suffrage associations here in Minnesota were as early as 1869. Oh. Now that's only 11 years after we became a state. So very early on, women were recognizing the power of coalition power of coming together, and then the power of connecting nationally as well. So the first woman that we want to feature today was actually one of the first suffragists in Minnesota history, and that's Sarah Berger Stearns. Yeah, Sarah Berger Stearns, she sort of represents that, what I think of as the first wave suffragism. She was born in New York City in the 1830s, mm. and so by the time she got to Minnesota after the Civil War, she was well aware of the suffrage movement on the East Coast. She went to her first suffrage rally when she was 14 years old. Wow. She came here after she had worked as a nurse in the Civil War. She was well on her way to understanding what it meant to fight for women's rights. Mm. She became a force in terms of petitioning at the state capitol. She formed very early suffrage associations, first in Rochester, then in Duluth, and then she was one of the founding members of the Minnesota Women's Suffrage Association in wow. 1881. There were also a lot of women who still had a lot of barriers to being able to vote, even after the 19th Amendment passed, particularly women of color, but they were still out there uh, doing the work. And that's uh, Nellie Francis. Yeah, and Nellie Francis was interested in voting rights, and she did form the Every Woman Suffrage Club in 1914, which was an African-American club. And she did form alliances with the white women who were working in other clubs. But Nellie Francis was a civil rights activist across the board. As a high school student, she went to what is now St. Paul Central High School. Mm -hmm. In 1891, she delivered a valedictorian speech on the race problem, and she never let up on that topic. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that is most remarkable about her is that she drafted the first anti-lynching legislation for the state of Minnesota just a few months before the suffrage amendment passed actually. Mm -hmm. Nellie was already working at a national level to write an amendment to our state constitution and she did get that passed in 1921. Moving forward a little bit, those women are all laying the groundwork for other women like Ruth Tanbara. Yeah, and Ruth Tanbara was living on the west coast in California in 1942, and that's when President Roosevelt signed the executive order that moved Japanese Americans out of California and across the country into internment camps. Ruth and her husband ended up in St. Paul. When she got here, she was a noted speaker, she was a noted people person, if you will, and she was very, very good at advocating for Japanese Americans, and she worked tirelessly for 30 years to make sure that she was constantly forming connections and forming bonds with people throughout the St. Paul community. She also worked very hard on citizenship efforts and that went hand in hand with voting efforts. So how do you think that these women over time in Minnesota state history continue to impact some of the work that women are doing today around representation and suffrage and a number of other causes? The one thing that we learn when we look back at these women is perseverance. Sarah Berger Stearns didn't live to see the amendment passed. She no doubt realized that, that she was fighting for something that would be a benefit to her daughters, her granddaughters, her great-granddaughters. And I think that's what we learned today is that the folks who are fighting for voting rights, for the continued enfranchisement of all sorts of people, recognize the work might not happen today, might not happen tomorrow, but it will happen. And people need to keep fighting. Yes, and in the spirit of the women who came before and the women who are doing the work now and in the future, how amazing to have this right to vote. And hopefully everybody goes out and exercises that in this upcoming election. Thank you so much, Kate Roberts, for joining us.